This is London. His Majesty King George the Sixth. Today, we give thanks to Almighty God for a great deliverance. Speaking from our empire's oldest capital city, a war battered, but never for one moment daunted or dismayed. Speaking from London, I ask you to join with me in that act of thanks and giving. A Germany and the enemy who drove all who were into war has been finally overcome. In the far east, we have yet to deal with the Japanese, a determined and cruel foe. And to this, we shall turn to the utmost resolve and with all our resources. But at this hour, when the dreadful shadow of war has passed far from our hearts and homes in these islands, we may at last make one pause for thanksgiving and then turn our thoughts to the past all over the world with deep in the earth being women. And let us remember those who will not come back. Their constancy and courage in battle, their sacrifice and endurance in the face of a merciless enemy. Let us remember the men in all the services and the women in all the services who have laid down their lives. We have come to the end of our tribulation and they are not with us at the moment of our rejoicing. And then let us salute in proud gratitude the great host of the living who have brought us to victory. I cannot praise them to the measure of each one's service. For in the total war, the efforts of, of all rise to the same noble fight, and all are devoted to the common purpose. Armed or unarmed, men and women, you have fought, striven, and endured to your utmost. No one knows that better than I do. And as your king, I thank with a full heart those who bore arms so valiantly on land and sea or in the air, and all civilians who, shouldering their many burdens, have carried them unflinchingly without complaint. With those memories in our minds, let us think what it was that has 
upheld us through nearly six years of suffering and peril. With the knowledge that everything was at stake, our freedom, our independence, our very existence as a people. But the knowledge also that in defending ourselves, we were defending the liberties of the whole world. And that our cause was the cause not of this nation only, the not of this empire and commonwealth only, but of every land where freedom is cherished and law and liberty go hand in hand. In the darkest hours we knew that the enslaved and isolated peoples of Europe looked to us. Their hopes for our hopes. Their confidence concerned our faith. We knew that if we failed, the last remaining barrier against a worldwide tyranny would have fallen in ruins. But we did not fail. We kept faith with ourselves and with one another. We kept faith and unity with our great allies. That faith, that unity have carried us to victory through dangers which at times seemed overwhelming. So let us resolve to bring to the task which lies ahead the same high confidence in our mission. Much hard work awaits us both in the restoration of our own country after the ravages of war and in helping to restore peace and a sanity to a shattered world. This comes upon us at a time when we have all given of our best for five long years and more, heart and brain, nerve and muscle have been directed upon and the overthrow of Nazi tyranny. Now we turn fortified by success to deal with our last remaining foe. And the Queen and I know the ordeals which you have endured throughout the Commonwealth and Empire. We are proud to have shared some of these ordeals with you, and we know also that together we shall all face of the future to stern resolve and prove that our reserve of willpower and vitality are inexhaustible. There is great comfort in the thought 
that the years of darkness and danger in which the children of our country have grown up are over. And please God, forever. We shall have failed, and the blood of our dearest will have flowed in vain. It's the victory which they died to win does not lead to a lasting peace founded on justice and goodwill. To that, then, let us turn our thoughts on this day of just, of just triumph and proud sorrow. And then, take up our work again, resolve as a people to do nothing unworthy of those who died for us and to make the world such a world as they would have desired for their children and for ours. This is the task to which now honor binds us. In the hour of danger, we humbly committed our cause into the hand of God. And he has been our strength and shield. Let us thank him for his mercies and in this hour of victory, to commit ourselves and our new task to the guidance of that same strong hand. of England, His Majesty George VI, speaking from London. Now, for a special broadcast, we take you to San Francisco.